the morning or afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Bill Higginbotham. I'm with EA Technology in the United States. Uh, with me today is Tony Dowd, who's with EA in uh, the UK. And we've got a couple minutes to go until the start time here, so we're just going to uh, sit still and uh, wait for everyone else to join. And then we'll begin our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can type them into the chat box. And what we'll do is we'll go through them at the end. And, uh, you know, if you have some something you really need to discuss, just click on the box that indicates a hand waving and I will uh, I'll try and get back to you. I don't want to keep disrupting the presentation, but if we need to, we certainly can. Uh, there's no real time limit to this. We can stay and answer questions as long as you want us to. If we, our presentation is not that long, but we can go on as long as you need us. All right, we'll give it another minute or so. Hopefully, hopefully everybody's doing well, wherever they may be in the world. Uh, crazy times, but we're, we're getting through it. We've uh, published a paper on ISO 5000 and how it helps during a pandemic. If you'd like a copy of that, just type that into the comments too, and we'll, we'll make sure you get a copy. There's one up on the IAM website, and there's one up on my uh, LinkedIn page as well. So, all right, well, uh, it's it's showing that it's 11 o'clock where I am, and uh, why don't we uh, get started? So why don't you flip to the next slide, Tony, and we'll do the introductions. Tony, okay. So yes, as I said, I'm the president of EA Technology in the United States. I'm responsible for North and South America, the Caribbean Islands, and Bermuda. Uh, and I'm responsible for all aspects of EA in that area. I'm not an asset management expert, but uh, next guy is. Tony, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Tony Dowd. I'm based at our offices in, in Capenhurst. I am I'm looking forward to discussing asset management with you guys today. Okay, you want to put the next slide? All right, so just uh, a quick minute on EA technology. We've been around for over 50 years. We're actually a spin off of the UK utility system. Uh, we do a, lot, a variety of things. Um, we have a, a line of condition assessment instruments focused around partial discharge that we design, manufacture, and sell. We do uh, asset health services. We can do surveys, whether they're ground surveys or uh, wood pole surveys. Uh, lightning surveys, things like that. Uh, we do a lot of work in low carbon grid transformation and, and grid modernization. We are, have run a number of studies for the UK regulator on electric vehicle impact on distribution equipment, uh, things like that. We have uh, a group that handles asset investment management and optimizing your, your asset investment and where you should spend it based on the actual condition, probability of failure, and monetized risk. But the area we're going to talk about today is ISO 55000. So we are a, uh, a, a patron of the Institute of Asset Management. We have been involved in the development of the uh, standards. Uh, we're members of the IAM Council. We sit on the standards body. Uh, we are, <coughs> excuse me, we're endorsed assessors and endorsed trainers by the IAM. So we can help you get ISO 55000 uh, certification or train you on it or whatever you need. Okay, and I'll turn it over to Tony at this point. Right, thank you, Bill. Um, right, so ISO 55000 Asset Management. Um, it's not just concerned with managing electrical networks. That's the first thing to point out. I know we're talking about electrical networks in the main today, but what we're going to discuss is equally valid across all types of network and, in fact, all types of assets including other utilities, gas, water, transport, manufacturing, etc. Um, but when you're developing your, your asset management system and when you're considering implementing asset management, 
the first thing you need to do is to clearly define the scope of your your AMS, your asset management system. And you know your business needs, and it's about applying your asset management system to areas where you'll derive most benefit for your business. You need to consider when we're saying the scope, what is it going to cover? Is it going to, you know, electrical utilities? Are we just concentrating on our electrical assets and maybe associated structures? Is that the, you know, the, the extent of our asset management system? Or are we going to look at asset data, IT hardware? If we're a manufacturer or an industrial network operator, is it going to cover our manufacturing equipment? So to get your scope right is critical in the in the first instance. So we're going to focus on mainly electrical utility networks, but again, it's absolutely relevant to industrial networks, to renewable networks, in fact, all types of organizations. So the ISO standards are all based on what we call the plan, do, check, act cycle. And when we start getting into a bit more detail on the asset management system, every element of your asset management system is subject to that same plan, do, check, act cycle. So what you've got there is you've got continuous improvement built in. And that's one of the things that you need to, to understand about an asset management system. It's, it's integral to the system is that continuous improvement is built in. And also one of the other words that I'd like you to take away from today is risk management. So what is asset management? A common misunderstanding when we start working with many companies is because they um, are maintaining and inspecting their assets on a regular basis, they consider that is asset management. Maintaining your assets is, yes, it's part of uh, um, ensuring the reliability and safety of your assets, but it's only a key, it's only a small element of an asset management system. So, you know, you're managing your assets to achieve your corporate objectives. It's a much bigger picture. You're looking at your assets from a full life cycle perspective. You're looking at them from your original procurement or purchase decisions, right through to operations, right through to decommissioning and end of life. And it's all these decisions that you make, including disposal along that life cycle that is part of your asset management system. And it's multidisciplinary. You know, you're looking at many, many considerations in terms of risk and balancing that risk with the priorities and the funding you have available as a business. So asset management, is it different from what you do today? Maybe not a great deal. But an asset management system needs to be to consider many, many different factors. What risks are you exposed to as a business in terms of operating that network? What risks are inherent with the network? How do you consider those risks? You know, what is what first of all, what have I got to do that's mandatory? What am I regulated to do? What are the standards and legislation that I need to comply with? How do we stack those risks when we start thinking about the risks and how do we identify what are the highest priorities? Moving on to, you know, we're maintaining our assets, but what blend of maintenance and asset replacement programs do we need to manage the risk and maintain network performance as part of a holistic view in terms of asset management? Asking yourself the questions, well, yeah, I need to replace assets, 
am I going to do my poles? Am I going to do my transformers? Am I going to do my switch gear? Pardon me. Sorry about that. I am, um, and you're asking yourself the question: What engineering options do I have, and what's going to deliver best value for the organisation? So again, you know, what blend of maintenance and asset replacement programs are going to allow you to to hit the targets that you have for for performance or reliability? And then having developed an optimised asset management program based on the funding, based on the labour you have, sometimes the goalposts change. And then you need to adapt quickly, very quickly to the change in circumstances. You need to adapt to maybe cut programs to defer work and having a, a robust asset management system will allow you to, to, to adapt to those changing circumstances and that's been highlighted by the recent COVID-19 pandemic um, and Bill's already mentioned a paper that's been published um, on this subject but it demonstrated really the benefit of having an asset management system that's compliant to ISO 55000 because you've got uh, you've got the data you've got the information readily available to adapt quickly you know to decide when you're in a position where you can't get guys to site and you've got limited resources you know what things do you need to do to maintain critical um, critical elements of the program. So we talked about asset management. So what is ISO 55000? We've already said that it's based on the plan, do, check, act cycle. Um, but it was originally Asset, the asset management standard was PAS 55, and that was a publicly available British standard. And it was replaced by ISO 55000 as an international standard, and is currently under review. So what it provides is guidance on asset management best practice, and it's been created by asset management professionals and led by the Institute of Asset Management. ISO 55000, published in 2014, is in three parts. Um, and just to note, uh, ISO 55002, the guidelines were updated in 2018. ISO 55000, doesn't tell you how to manage your assets. You know your business better than anybody. You know your network better than anybody. However, ISO provides a framework, it provides a standard to develop a well-functioning asset management system that will reduce risk, support your corporate objectives, and add value. ISO doesn't describe how to do asset management. It defines what things must be implemented to achieve a good asset management system. For example, one of the many clauses, 7.3, states that persons doing work under the organization's control can have an impact on the achievement of asset management objectives. Uh, Tony, so your slides don't appear to be advancing. You're still on the ISO 55,000. Yes, no, that's okay, Bill. Thank you. Yeah, um, and be aware of asset management policy, but it doesn't tell you how you're going to do that. But it says that you need to do it. You need to have the systems. You need to have the policies. You need to have the training in place to make sure that you satisfy that particular clause.
So looking at ISO 55001, now these are the requirements that you need to comply with if you need to conform to if you will if you're going to be certified to ISO 55000 and the sections are we've got context of the organization leadership planning support operations performance evaluation and improvement and that's what we talked about earlier in terms of continuous improvement if we look at each of those sections and break them down there you can see we're not going to go into each of these today but there you can see each of the different clauses 27 across iso 55001 the requirements document so if we just look at let's say support clause seven and um, you see that you know that covers resource it covers the competence of staff undertaking work it looks at awareness and communications so it's everything in terms of workforce and, and documentation and creating that control so back to the plan do check act cycle we said, um, like all ISOs, ISO 55000 is based around that Deming plan do check app cycle. So you can see here in terms of where the various sections of ISO 55001 map into that cycle. Let's talk a little bit about the, the benefits that can be achieved from adopting ISO 55000. If you can develop and implement an effective asset management system that conforms to 55001, you're more likely to deliver benefits that include the, the following. We've got performance improvement. And I'm not going to read all of these slides, but you know, you will get a copy of these at the end of the, the presentation. Um, but you're going to be more effective and efficient in managing your short and your long term opportunities for sustainability and performance improvement. Cost improvements, you're going to be able to manage risk. It's an ongoing review process that provides procedures and asset performance. Um, to inform your management decisions and balance cost, risk, and performance. You know, you've set your, your performance targets, how you're going to achieve them. Others that you can see there are um, assurance of business growth and improvement and reliable decision making based on good information and solid data. Enhanced stakeholder confidence. Um, many organizations, particularly utilities who, who go for ISO 55000, it has become a, a regulatory requirement. But as well as it being a regulatory requirement, it's, it, it's all about your reputation. And sometimes it's not about your reputation. Um, to regulators or other um, other bodies, but also your reputation in terms of your customers. So how do you achieve ISO 55000 certification? We'll just look at the journey very quickly. The journey starts with, with a commitment um, from the organization. Now, that's not simple in itself because of you know, the, the misunderstanding of what asset management is. And that's how we started the presentation. You know, just because we're maintaining, we're inspecting our assets, doesn't mean that we're effectively managing our assets. So sometimes we're in a position where because of that um, lack of understanding, we may have to introduce, you know, the, the concept and the overall um, 
view of asset management and ISO 55000 to, to senior managers within an organization. And it will often require you know, training programs within your organization because once you commit to ISO 55000, it, a lot of the work will be done internally within your organization. We said that you, know, you guys know your, your network better than anybody. So it's a, you know, it, it's the input from the organisation that really develops a well-tuned asset management system. So once we've got that commitment, we're then going to say, well, what is our future state? And what I mean by the future state is, do you require certification, or do you just want to get to a standard? that you can say is equivalent to ISO 55000. So you know your system is, you know, conforms, but you might necessarily want to go to, along the full certification route. If we look at the, the journey in terms of three distinct sections, We've got that strategic action where you decide what your future state is going to look like and maybe we're considering training requirements at that point. We then move on to, OK, we're going to go on to this journey. How do we how are we positioned now? What is the current state? What is the maturity of our asset management system against the requirements of ISO 55000? Then we go on to an implementation phase and finally certification. So we'll go through some of those sec sectors on the journey in a bit more detail. So we talked before about strategic guidance, strategic actions, and often there's a requirement for, for training, for developing strategic policy for determining what that future state is going to look like. Then in terms of a gap analysis, you can see from our radar plot here that all of the, the 27 clauses um, within ISO 55001 are all mapped here. So you can see that the green line is what you need to achieve to demonstrate conformance yeah so you need to be above that green line scoring two and a half or above to demonstrate conformance right and you can see this is a typical radar plot for an organization where it's it's achieved or ex um or gone even better than the minimum requirements but in some areas it's 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 deficient it's got non-conformances so that's what the gap analysis does it will look at your systems and determine whether they conform to iso 55000 and that maturity scoring is is what we see here so zero is elements required are not in place so you have to major non-conformance um number one would say the organization has basically got an understanding but the requirements is it is it's it's, it's it's developing and then we move on to embedding, optimizing, and going beyond, which is um, level scoring of four. So for the implementation, we we then move on to from the gap analysis a roadmap would be produced. So if we go back a few slides, 
you can see here that, that what we've done is we've gone through this map in the current state against what the future state is, whether that's certification. We then, we've done that and then from the gap analysis, we then know what areas need to be developed further, which areas are, are conforming, which areas are, aren't conforming to the requirements. And then we've got the roadmap and we move into an implementation phase. And then ultimately, if the desired state is to go for certification, then we embark on the certification audit. Just catching up with the slides. So if we then think about certification, the first point to note is that once you're certified to ISO 55000, it lasts for three years. But let's look at a bit more about the, 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 the certification process itself. We've already been through the gap analysis. We've got the roadmap. You've implemented all of the, or developed or implemented um, actions to um, fill any gaps or non-conformances. We're then into a, a, um, a stage one audit, certification audit, and that will look to assess your entire asset management system against the requirements. It concentrates on what you say you do and involves meetings with people responsible for the implementation and the management of the asset management system. And the output at that stage includes the minor or major non-conformances and a radar plot similar to that in the gap analysis. Following the stage one audit, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's almost always we have a, a period to allow an opportunity to correct any, any non-conformances. And depending on the level um, and the work required to you know, to plug those gaps, um, you know, it can be you know a, a few months um, to to allow that to happen. Then we move into um, stage two. Now, stage two is first of all assessing the non-conformances raised in the stage one audit and also looks for evidence that you do what you say you do, and you do it consistently across the business. It primarily involves meetings with a wide range of people, so it's not just the, the individuals responsible for developing and implementing and managing the asset management system. It's more about the people responsible for various asset management functions, delivery of work programs. And some of the questions that we ask are, you know, do they understand why the work is being undertaken? Why is the work important? Are they working to the correct requirements, to the correct design? Are they working to the correct procedures as documented in the asset management system? Are the records that they're creating correct? Is the data being captured effectively? Because your asset management system is ultimately based on solid quality information, asset data and condition information that will allow you to assess risk and make the right sorts of decisions moving forward. So the certification process starts with that pre-cert audit, the stage one, and then finishes with the stage two. I, um, if there are no major non-conformances at that point, you would get certification. It would last for three years. And during that three-year period, there's generally two surveillance audits. 
when we um, would come in and look to see that things are continuing to evolve the you know the asset management system is still following that path of continuous improvement and also that you're still um working in accordance with the policy and procedures defined in your asset management system if you look at iso 55000 um globally you can see the slide here shows you how many organizations have been certified now you see europe's the the most prolific on the left hand side there and then the usa and canada on the right hand side is just starting to consider iso 55000 in fact it's only in the last year that ea technology certified the first electrical utility in the usa to achieve ISO 55000 certification, and that was the Transmission Utility New York Power Authority, NIPA, I am, who I have to say performed very well. I am, I've got an excellent um, asset management system. You can see the furthermore on the, um, the columns, it's the area at the bottom that shows the number of electrical utilities so it's the light green area at the bottom of each column that's electrical utilities another point to note is that utility regulators are taking an increased interest in iso 55000 and an example of that is that chile has recently declared that the utilities in in the country need to be iso 55000 certified and have set some very challenging time scales for that to happen um, and the other columns there the other sectors are um, and the other areas of the columns are oil gas water manufacturing facilities management so you can see the way iso 55000 isn't just about electrical networks it's about all utilities it's about manufacturing as we discussed earlier So thank you for listening. I hope I've given you a, an insight um, into ISO 55000. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you'd like to understand more or you're considering developing or enhancing your existing asset management system, then please contact either myself or Bill um, at EA Technology and we'd be more than happy to help. Over to you, Bill. Yes, yeah, so now we'll open it up to questions. If you have any questions, uh, either uh, type them into the chat box or raise your hand and we'll uh, unmute you. Okay, well, I don't see any questions coming up. I guess you did a good job explaining it, Tony. And it's a, a very short introduction, and uh, the standards are available. And if you need any help understanding them, um, okay, we got a question here from Canada on uh, how long does it take to get certified? A hard um, question. It is a it is a hard question. Um, it's if you if you bear in mind that what we're looking at when we come in to do a, a gap analysis and and also you know moving on to a stage one and a stage two it's all about the maturity of your asset management system so it's not something you've got to be able to demonstrate and provide evidence of of things happening so it's not something you can you know the inks um the ink's not still wet on the on the documents and you're saying risk right we're ready to go for iso 55000 certification it's got to embed you've got to demonstrate that you're doing reviews and you know it's got to be in place for a certain cycle there are certain things that can only be um, demonstrated in the longer term but i would say that you've got to have your asset management systems in for a for a certain level of time i am um, 
and and, and we can help you develop those asset management systems and get the right framework in place um, but then once you've got the documents if we came in and i would say that you know from a gap analysis to certification the minimum you'd be looking at really is 12 months i think that's a, a very optimistic very optimistic yeah i think the best that's why I'm, that's why i'm saying the best but that's on the assumption that you've done all of the work ready to you know be, even be considered for certification to get yourself to the position where you're ready to commit and take on your gap analysis that could be two years yeah i believe the new york power authority took between three and four years to, yeah. to get uh, ready yeah. you know if your asset management system is almost compliant already it's a shorter time if you're starting from scratch it can be very long and involved yep yeah. I guess it's based on your starting position. If you're doing a lot of the right things, sometimes it's about tying those things together into a coherent system. Yeah, some, developing the system is one thing, getting all your employees to, to buy in and to follow it and to change the culture so it becomes something they, they do and they know why they're doing it uh, can be the hardest part. Yeah, and I would say that that's one of the, the downfalls of of, of of many organizations is they don't take the um the organization with them when they develop a, an asset management system asset management is something that you should be doing as an organization and you do it together because it's ingrained within your organization asset management shouldn't be something that is done to you i am um, all you know and communications as your your asset management system is going to be key to getting the benefits from that asset management system in the long term. Okay, well, thanks everyone for attending. Um, you'll get uh, a link to the video of this and we'll also send the presentation around. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact uh, myself or Tony. And uh, have a great day.